The idea is that I'll stand about a fifth of a wavelength in front of this reflector and see if it's directive. As for the antenna, I'll be using the Wade Tenna pedestrian mobile vertical that I normally use for pedestrian mobile. But instead of using five meters of wire, which is a bit taller than this is high, I'll only use about three meters of wire. That's a 5 8 wavelength on 10 meters. And I'll transmit whisper in various bursts and walk around to see if this reflector has any effect on the signal. I've picked this one as this one favours north. That should fire my signals towards Japan and South Asia, which at this time of day should be okay for 10 metres. I'll transmit whisper in a few bursts from here. Then I might go to the other side and see if there's attenuation because then the screen will be directly in that path. Then I might try somewhere like in the middle of the oval where there shouldn't be any effect from anything that's surrounding it. Okay, now for the second lot of bursts, I'll be near the reflector, I'll step back, I'll step forward about two metres from it. That's about a fifth of a wavelength. Not sure how well this thing is going to work because this reflector thing is only about three meters high and I've got three meters of wire but that starts at about my waist level so there's about a meter or so of the wire is protruding above this so-called reflector. Well, that's two out of three tests. Last one is the south side. If I want to be picked up by Japan, then my signal will have to make it the way through this mesh. Now back home and having a look at results from WhisperNet. I don't think conditions were particularly good as there's not a huge number of stations receiving me but anyway those who did are displayed on the screen and I've organized it so at the bottom of the screen is when I was at the center of the field then 
in the middle and towards the top when I was on the north side of the fence and then the last little bit near the top on the south side of the fence. So yeah, a whole lot of reports there. And if we have a look at our next screen, these are two within VK3, uh, VK3 DXE and VK3 KCX. Now, VK3 DXE is a good test, um, about 10 kilometers south of here. And what I've done with the numbers that you see on the right, I've got the zero as the reference point because, you know, 0, 0410, 0, 0412, 0, 0414, I was in the middle of the field. And on average, he got me at plus six. So I've just made that as zero for the reference. Then when I moved so that the fence was south of me, um, and two meters south of me, signals dropped way, way down. Um, instead of being plus six, they dropped to minus seven. So that's a difference of 13 dB. And bearing in mind that VK3DXE is directly south, so I was firing straight through the fence to get him, and that cut 13 dB off the signal. And then when I moved to the south side of the fence, so the fence was behind me, then there was a little bit of gain, um, plus 4 dB. So that improved the signal compared where when I was out in the open area. So according to that, about 4 dB of gain. So the fence was acting as a bit of a reflector. Now, another station, VK3KCX, a um, bit further away, 32 kilometers away, and different direction, um, 43 degrees, so that makes it at about northeast. If we take the reference location, yeah, around uh, plus 12 dB, so he was actually getting me stronger um, there than VK3DXE, even though 3DXE was closer. Anyway, plus 12 dB from the open space location, I then move to the north side of the fence, plus 13. It's really not statistically um, relevant. So it's just plus one dB, but really it might as well be zero. So uh, no gain there, I don't think. But when I went to the, on the south side of the fence, where the fence was shielding me from VK3K6, then signals dropped, so it was minus seven. So in both those cases, the fence was having a shielding effect and dropping off the signal. And the effect was notable if you were firing straight through the fence rather than if the signal was a bit off to a side. Now, as far as DX goes, um, there are two of them, uh, VR2FUN, there's Dash 74 and Dash 73. So I think it's the same guy, but maybe slightly different location. Um, 327 degrees and BM2 KVV, not far away, I don't think, at 337 degrees. So around 7,500 kilometers away, almost due north. Um, that's 360 degrees. Anyway, you'll notice there's only two cases where I was received. In both cases, when I was on the south side of the fence, neither of them were receiving me. When I was in the clear, or when I was on the north side of the fence, I was getting received. So the signal reports, the signal strengths, not very strong, minus 25, about minus 25, minus 28, so pretty weak. So it's no surprise that going on the other side of the fence may be a bit weaker, which made me inaudible um, at, at those locations. So the difference between being right near the fence with the fence behind me and being in an open area, pretty much zero. So I don't think the fence is giving me any gain at all. It might've been a little bit of gain for before when we we're looking at VK3 DXE, but overall, the big thing about the fence is that it really badly shields signals. It can 
drop signals by uh, 7 dB, um, maybe 13 dB, you know, one or two S points. So it's a, a significant drop. If you've got a tall fence that's in between you and where you're firing into, then there's some directivity of that. Now, there could be cases, if, if you're trying to work DX, like if you're in a certain part of Europe, where let's say you're trying to work across, let's say that you're in Western Europe, in Ireland or England, somewhere like that, and you're trying to work Americans across the Atlantic. Well, if you had a fence that was running you know, north, south, and, that was, and you managed to get yourself just on the Western side of that, then you could use that to reduce QRM from Europe. And although you might not be improving your signal strength, as heard in North America, you're reducing QRM. Um, so that could be a benefit. Uh, even if you're using digital modes, you know, if, if say FT8, uh, then your receiving might be better. You might There might be frequencies where you have got other stations in Europe that's smothering what you're trying to receive in, in North America. But if you locate yourself on the right side of the fence and you've got the fence between you and the direction you don't want to work, then there's a possibility that it can offer some interference rejection. I'm not going to say it's the best. There's other ways you can reduce interference, you can use antennas, especially critically coupled antennas. Antennas like the Moxon, they might not have a particularly strong forward gain, but if you look at their radiation patterns, there seems to be quite a steep null off the, off the back. Um, whereas antennas like a two element Yagi that aren't critically coupled, they might have slightly more forward gain, but the attenuation off the back isn't so much. In fact, with a, a two element Yagi, um, if you really want attenuation off the back, then you probably need to go to three or four elements. Two straight elements doesn't seem to give you much of a front to back ratio. Anyway, that's my experience anyway, as I've played around on antenna modeling and built the odd two element Yagi on VHF. So yeah, just thought I'd do this video very crude, but showing how you can get a bit of directivity. It can especially help your reception if you locate on the correct side of a fence.